now we're going to move on to a, a panel where we're discussing biomechanics in Major League Baseball. Um, <clears throat> we'll see as we pull up the panelists. Uh, we, should have, we have Ethan Stewart is going to stay with us. He's the player performance facilitator with uh, the Baltimore Orioles, um, as well as uh, Bryce Nakamura. He's director of integrative sports performance with Milwaukee Brewers. Um, and finally, we've got, uh, last but not least, Ben Hansen. He's a senior biomechan uh, biomechanical engineer with the Chicago White Sox. And he's uh, formerly, most of you probably know, with Modus Global. Um, <clears throat> so just really quickly, um, I wanted to start off with a little bit about uh, your guys' backgrounds. Maybe just really quickly uh, talk about your education and jobs or positions you've held within the baseball community, including things like internships and things that you might have had on the way. I just want to get a kind of give aspiring biomechanists an idea of the career paths you've taken, whether you really planned it that way or not. Um, maybe we can start with uh, Ethan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I started out with a undergrad in kinesiology uh, where I fell in love with biomechanics, decided to pursue a master's degree in biomechanics under another one of our board members, that Dr. Shapiro. So he was my mentor as well. Um, and then started my PhD work. So I knew I wanted to work in baseball, but not really sure how. Um, I did two years of a summer internship with the Tampa Bay Rays as a performance science intern. And that led me to basically find what I wanted to do. And um, I'm a PhD candidate right now from Mississippi State University in biomechanics. Um, my, finishing my dissertation, so that's the, the hard part, but the longest part. So working on that from home and the stadium and everywhere else. Um, and I, I sent emails to basically every team asking if they had job openings and, and found the one position that was right for me. So um, finding, finding those internships and then finding the position that suits you for your personality and what you want to find for a job is, is the big key for me. And the education is definitely a helpful piece. Okay, and uh, Ben? Uh, yeah, so my background started in uh, my undergrad as a biomedical engineering major, uh, as well as mathematics. And um, at the time, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I was trained more in like biomedical e electronics, so like an EE degree almost. Um, and I felt that I probably wanted to go to grad school to get a little more education. And um, to do that, you had to do these like undergraduate research projects. And I got hunkered down in some ophthalmology lab. It was the most boring thing ever. And I just... I just, well, I hated it, but uh, it made me read all these articles. And I remember you know, having access to this new journal and uh, came across Dr. Fleissig's uh, papers and I started kicking myself. And Glenn, you should actually probably look through your old emails. I, I emailed him that summer in undergrad. I was like, oh, I, I can't believe, you know, I didn't, I didn't know this was a field and I love baseball. I played it uh, in college, D3. And um, he pointed me to Jason Long, who was the head biomechanist for the Brewers at the time. And so I don't think I talked to Glenn for another couple of years, but I, I did talk with uh, Jason Long and I just started picking his brain, uh, volunteered with the brewers at their lab at the medical college for um, about a year until Jason left and was fortunate to get an opportunity to collect some data for the team and, and come on as a, a motion capture tech. But in order to do that, um, you know, they told me I had to enroll in a graduate program. So I was working on a PhD at Marquette University, similar type of work with electronics and uh, actually took a summer and emailed back Glenn and said, hey, uh, you know, I, I met with this Jason guy. I've been studying this. Can I come learn from you? You know, I was like working in a vacuum of, you know, not really talking to many people and, uh, and learning from other people and just wanted to learn from the best. Um, so, yeah, I reached out to Glenn, did a, a summer internship at ASMI. And that's where I met uh, Dave Fortenbaugh, uh, who was just in the, the Q&A there. And then um, uh, we ended up starting MODIS, at least the biomechanics side of it. Uh, down at IMG Academy. And so for the last eight years, you know, I've been working on building, you know, ind industrial products for various sports, healthcare technologies as well. And, uh, you know, about the last 12 to 18 months, we were going through various M&A uh, transactions. Some of them are still ongoing, actually. But uh, that's when I met a lot of the folks at the White Sox and uh, wanted to make the next step in my career and joined them full time last December. So it's my first year with the White Sox now. But uh, yeah, started academically and kind of went through the industrial route. Okay, and uh, Bryson, you think you can give us a, a brief overview of your education career? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
definitely not as linear as as these guys um you know played for a year d3 um decided you know that kind of wasn't for me so i needed to fill my time i was an exercise science uh, undergrad major um and started to get into more exercise science uh, biomechanics based research a lot of uh, balance and footwear design um, type of aspects. Um, and then when I went to do my, my PhD at the University of Oregon, um, my research was actually focused more on classification algorithms for lower extremity prosthetics, active powered prosthetics. Um, but, you know, still had a little bit of that sport itch and wanted to continue in performance. And so I did a lot of um, assisting with our exercise physiology side of VO2 max testing, lactate threshold assessments, and and performance assessments on that side of things. So, you know, kept my hands really dabbling on both sides, um, and then was fortunate enough to um, actually get an internship with the Tampa Bay Rays for about two months um, while I was finishing up my PhD. Um, and, you know, one thing kind of led to another and, and the Brewers ended up calling and, and that ended up being where, you know, I went. So I've been here for um, almost five years now with the Brewers, um, but as you can see, kind of jumped around in the, in the research side of things. But at the end of the day, a lot of it was based in the sports science and um, uh, just, you know, going back and forth between different topics. Okay. Interesting. So, you know, not, not the most linear paths but also kind of about making connections and internships and things uh, getting to know uh, know people there um so this list will be probably a much briefer question but yesterday in the academic research panel uh they talked a little bit about how a phd is necessary to be a professor or a research director while in industry often they, they seek biomechanists with just a master's or a bachelor's uh, with equivalent experience so uh, what do you see as the value of a PhD uh, with regards to working in professional baseball? Um, maybe Ethan or Bryce and um, Ben can weigh in a little if you want you know, as well. Um, but uh, Ethan, go ahead. Or, or Bryce and yeah. Ethan. Uh, yeah, I, I can start and Ethan, you can chime in. Um, honestly, like from the credential standpoint, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm personally not as big on it. I, I want to know master of skill, you know, a lot in yesterday's panel was more about the drive, the will, you know, to, to interact with others, to communicate well, to be a good human being, ask tough questions and do proper science, right? If you can, if you can do all of those things, um, irrespective of the degree that you hold, uh, you're, you're going to do well in, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. Um, so like the degrees, like as you get them, it shows the drive. But if, if you have a master's degree, if you have a bachelor's degree, if you have that same drive and you can show that you, you know what you're talking about and you're ready to come in and make a change or come in and help us grow as an organization, then that's what we're really looking for in the, in the org. Like the, the advanced degrees are really helpful. But if you have that drive, you don't have to have a master's or a PhD to come in and, and help us collect data or help us make changes within the organization. Uh, ben, um, can you talk a little about your transition from industry to uh, Major League Baseball? Um, for example, I mean, you've seen both sides of emerging technology procurement, um, both from a development and sales point of view, as well as uh, the MLB team's perspective now. Certainly. Yeah. Um, so for, for many years, you know, selling into teams is one thing. Um, it gives you a little peek into how they operate when you have to field support questions and, you know, get them to fully apply something, uh, whether that's lab data or wearable data from workloads. Um, but definitely with the White Sox, it's, it's has been the full, you know, integration that's been a lot different than I saw from the outside. Uh, but over the last year, I, I did consulting work with the White Sox. So I think that was probably the, the way in. Um, you know, I think a lot of times technology providers have things that aren't necessarily the easiest to use or aren't fully developed to a point that, uh, you know, they had set in mind, which is something that we had. So uh, being able to come in the last year and just help that process, I think, laid the foundation for something more full time. Okay. Um so we've got some questions in the Q&A and I, I had some that were kind of similar. So, uh, but really on the idea of uh, working as biomechanists with the MLB team, um, 
who do you work with? In other words, uh, are you working directly with players? Are you working with coaches? Is this at the major league level farm system? Um, are you interacting more with uh, a lot of other uh, scientists or is it really, what's, what's, what's the interaction with like hands-on with players and coaches? I can, I can take that. So um, that was a big part of, of the job I was looking for because I want to interact as much as possible. So I work from the front office through the coaches, athletic trainers, strength staff, actual like the coaches on field and the players so I, my goal was to be around everyone so i'm on the field working with the athletes to help them collect the data to to work and figure out what they're doing i'm with the strength staff and the at so we can help monitor what we're what we're doing i'm with the coaches um because our coaches understand this tech these days the, the coaches want to learn so we're working with them so that it's easy it's an easier transition when we collect the data the coaches are, are ready to look at it so when we collect the data it's not one person sitting down and explaining it to everyone you have 20 to 30 coaches that can all look at the data and be like oh well, this is what we see and they all see it together so i, I work from the top down um it, it, that's that's really how i think a biomechanic should be with an mlb team is be able to work with everyone and help everyone see how biomechanics can help them from players to the front office. And you can, you can add on to that as, as also um, be interested in expanding further on, uh, you know, do the coaches or any uh, coaches have any background in biomechanics or it seems like is there a growing interest on their part and on the player's part in kind of understanding what you guys are doing? Um, from from our organization, absolutely. Um, I know we have several coaches here on the call because they want to learn more, um, and and they're they're inquisitive. They want to learn. They want to see how things are broken down. So that's that's definitely a big thing. And coaches don't always have a background in biomechanics, but they're looking for certifications. They're looking for ways to learn about what's happening. Yeah, I'd certainly echo that from from our perspective, our organization, you know, same here, you know, we have staff members uh, and front, front office personnel, you know, on this call or are interested in, in some of the follow up videos. Um, you know, I, I think our ISP department for the Brewers is, is fortunate in the sense that we're kind of embedded within the medical department. You know, we work alongside ATs, uh, physical therapists, strength and conditioning, our mental skills, you know, um, and then not only that, we work alongside PD as, as really that support mechanism and, and through the front office. So it really is expansive to the sense that, you know, we've positioned ourselves as that support mechanism to help to provide, to teach, to learn, um, be a different, you know, set of eyes on, on, on similar questions. Um, and so, you know, to that point, the organization has been very receptive and um, in, in trying to foster and grow that um, perspective that we have. Nice. Uh, ben, would you like to add anything there? Yeah, I mean, it echoes a lot of what Bryson said. Um, I mean, first to start with the coaches, they've been great. Um, we brought on base you in this year. So just trying to coach from the same same language was a really good step. Um, and now I think we're to a point where, you know, with the shutdown, it's just one of uh, someone's questions, um, Dave's questions about remote base, you know, ho hosting weekly Zoom calls on just new biomechanics concepts. Our staff's been great at that. It's offered an opportunity to learn. And um, so I think the coaches have been great there. But yeah, the way we're structured is, is with medical. Um, usually that's probably the first step, you know, motion capture or biomechanics comes in. It's probably the second on ours. Um, and that's more from probably my personal beliefs. Um, just wanting to stay away from pitching mechanics correlating to injury risk. I, this is a question I'd love to pose to everybody, but um, I just haven't seen many hard outcome papers that correlate elbow torque to injury risk or certain mechanic to injury risk. So we try to stay away from that a little bit uh, and really focus more on the PD side player development with the coaches and getting the most out of players, whether that's through mechanically through drills or uh, in the weight room in strength and conditioning. Um, and again, that, that requires cohesiveness across every department, sports medicine, coaching, strength conditioning, and even the front office. Um, but that's, that's generally how it works over here at the White Sox. Can you, um, moving on to, we've had a couple questions uh, talking a little bit. Can you, can you guys, I mean, you, you guys have uh, some unique titles um, that, that don't exactly tell you what, what you what you guys do. So can you talk a little bit about your organizational structure, who you work with, who you report to, um, and going off that, um, uh, we've got a question here about uh, how exactly are you evaluated for your job performance? Are there certain metrics that people are looking for, uh, performance, injury reduction, things like that? Um, it's, uh, 
Uh, Bryson, can you start there? Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think a lot of it too is going to be, you know, are are we coming in as a biomechanist in particular? Are we coming in as a more general sports scientist? And and what is the org looking for, right? And I think those things will lead org to org to evaluate, um, you know, staff and and outcomes uh, differently. Um, certainly, from our respect, you know, like I said, we're we're in the medical umbrella, so um, you know, we report directly to our senior director, Roger Kaplinger, who was the head athletic trainer, you know, for the Brewers um, for a long time and is now, you know, elevated into his um, senior director role. Um, and so, you know, that provides us a, a unique perspective on how we fold into, you know, day-to-day -day coverage of these athletes, but then also, um, you know, in constant communication uh, with player development on how we're going to constantly work to improve processes, um, work to improve how we're, you know, looking at development, thinking about development in, in a lot of different and creative ways. And so, you know, I, I think the direct report is within medical for us, but, you know, like we touched on earlier, um, it, it's very expansive in who we interact with and how, how I think every org is going to value the, the respective uh, sports science areas. So I'm housed technically in the front office, so I report to our general manager, to our director of player development, but really it's an umbrella. So we work with everyone um, in terms of me. So I work with the ATs every day, helping to monitor. I, I work with the coaches every day to help them figure things out. So for like evaluating the job, it's, it's much more of a bigger umbrella in terms of sports science within our organization, where it, it's not only maybe injury prevention, but it's also our testing mechanisms. Are we getting better and more efficient? Are, are our coaches learning and are they learning how to do it themselves? Are they, are they becoming more independent? So for, for me, especially within this organization, that's, it's more of a bigger umbrella. There's not one specific thing we're evaluated on. It's how well in general we, we grow the organization. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty um, similar here too, Ethan. I mean, um, you know, the goal is just to, to try evaluating performance, like getting the process going, I think is a success. Um, Again, 10, 10 years ago, there weren't very many labs, let alone sports science departments. Um, and a lot of teams need to, to implement these and scale them. So that's success number one. Well, there, that kind of brings up a, a, a recent question in the q and uh, So there weren't a lot of labs 10 years ago. Um, and it's becoming more and more, uh, you know, more and more teams have them and, and biomechanists. Uh, do you think it's going to be possible to retrospectively examine biomechanical and injury data to determine the level of association between certain modifiable factors and injury risk in large samples of data? I mean, that's, that's going to be the goal, right? Our, our goal is to decrease injuries as much as possible. We, we want to prevent injuries on the baseball field while also improving their performance. So our, our goal is definitely to get there. And it's a matter of collecting the right data and not just getting, like we talked about before and, and yesterday's, if you collect too much data, then you get swallowed up and you don't know where you're gonna be. So collecting the right data that you can look at retrospectively and also use use what you know about the movements to do it in real time as much as possible. We don't, we don't go out as an organization and say, oh, well, we collected all this data and in 10 years, we, we can look at it and see who got injured. Our goal is to collect the data now that's reducing the injury risk as much as possible. Um, do, you, do you see in just your normal work or things you're looking at in the future, are you doing more looking at an individual or looking at a group as a whole to try to find risk factors or, you know, and, you know, or the individual and kind of trying to refine your techniques and things? Both. Um, Every movement is definitely individual. We know that every, everyone who's looked at baseball pitchers or baseball hitters knows that everyone's movement is a little different. So you're gonna have differences in those outputs based on the person, but you always wanna find one like baseline. This, is, this is, might be the cutoff, um, but you definitely get into more individualistic approach with, with some of the data points. I think, you know, the, the points of what we're talking about of, of where do where do teams necessarily fit in the spectrum? Where do where does industry fit? Where does where do the where does academia and, and research fit? Right. Like, I, I think that's one of the points we want to highlight across, you know, these different panels. But, um, you know, the, the, although we're all certainly intrigued and have this, you know, baseball biomechanics, sport biomechanics in mind. Right. We're, we're going to 
tug on the questions a little bit differently and, you know, kind of to Ethan's point on individualization and looking at what can we affect now? How do we make decisions for the for the betterment of the athlete? You know, we, we must take care of the athlete first and foremost, right? Um, um, nothing we do is going to be valuable without them. They're, they're the center. They're, they're important. Um, and, and then from there, you know, how can we utilize each kind of pillar of what, what this society aims to bring, right? Industry, team, and, and academia together and, and where we can pull on that. I, I think that's really at the core and what's exciting about what we're doing here, um, bringing together a diverse group of, of perspectives to answer very similar questions. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough balance, guys, right? Between uh, performance and health. and uh, But even from a performance perspective, you hear things like, uh, the most important ability is availability, right? So, um, but uh, Ben, can you talk, uh, we just, you know, we just had a draft. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about the balance also of you're doing biomechanics analyses of some sort, you know, with your teams on your roster, but what, do you do anything also with players not yet on the team, whether it's having to do with the draft or potential free agents or trades and things like that? Certainly. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't disclose everything, but it's a part of my role right now. Uh, I think it'll continue to grow and, you know, look at the stuff coming out of uh, pro play AI. Like that's going to be an integral piece. Does anyone else want to comment on that? I know I'm getting to trickier areas here, but. We look at all options available to see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. I would say it, it's just, you, you do as much as you can with the information you have. That's that's really what we have to do as an org. Okay. Um, how about uh, hitting and pitching? Uh, what's the sort of balance that you guys see right now in, in biomechanics working in MLB, as well as other things that you may be looking at, fielding, um, base running? Surprisingly equal. Uh, I think we all are all surprised by that statement. Um, and I definitely am because – Pitching is where it's been at, and I think it's probably the most clear of getting, you know, performance gains out of someone. Batting is a challenge, and I think it will continue to be a challenge. But tools are getting better, um, and I'm hopeful. But and then as far as fielding and other things, uh, that's definitely a focus of the group. I, I don't, I don't, haven't done too much personally on that, but um, I know there's gains to be made defensively with biomechanics. I mean, it, it's pretty balanced. The thing for us is that every group of coaching staff, all of our players want to be advanced. So there's no like, oh, well, the pitchers want to get better, but, you know, the hitters don't. So everyone on our team, everyone in our organization, all of our coaches want to grow. So for us, the tech that we have available, everyone wants to be able to use it. So we're growing at equal rates as, as we hope. Okay. Um, we've got a question here that's uh, really – we're wondering research – in Major League Baseball, are, there's a balance there with with keeping getting a competitive advantage and getting information important information published. Um, are MLB teams beginning to conduct research that will one day be published, or uh, just can you talk a little bit about uh, the aspect of spreading this knowledge far and wide so to help everyone versus competitive advantage? So you yeah, know, you yeah let's say no one wants right? that one, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, price, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think your classification of one day publishable, right? Um, you know, I, I think, yes, certainly, you know, things that we look at right now, I think the questions we ask um, obviously have a, a, whether it's a performance or injury flavor to it, um, you know, we, we're going to go after those questions. Certainly, you know, we, we, we all get into this because we want to help. We want to um, assist in, in development development um keep keep players healthy and on the field and so we want to share that information but at the same time you know we are hired by these teams that um we're, we're trying to search for those competitive advantages um I, I think i think that information does leak out though you know and and as insights grow as um teams start to implement different things th there is almost a um 
potential cause effect relationship you can start to deduce. Is it as quick and as rapid as we'd like? No, not necessarily. Um, but I do think, you know, whether it's two, three years, um, that information becomes a wash and, and it's kind of either a known um, um, uh, piece of information, you know, and, and so it is a balance of trying to find that competitive advantage. But also, you know, I think forums like this of, of asking questions and, you know, we saw the published work that Glenn presented on, you know, yesterday in, in his slides of the amount of work that's just um, increasing exponentially, you know, that that's being published. Um, I think a lot of, you know, there's a lot of great minds working on similar questions. And so the fact that teams, you know, you think we have the upper hand, you know, there, there's still a lot of people out there working on um, good science that that is going to get published out there. Um, so I, I almost don't know if that that gap is as large as we think. There's uh, echoing what he said, there's also the, the part where when we're doing internal studies, we're not writing it in a scientific fashion either. Like I'm not going into give everyone all of my methods or an intro, we're, we're looking for just what those results are to apply. So it's a little different for us to try to get these out there when I'm not right, sitting down to write a scientific paper, I'm trying to create one page that gives my coaches the information they need to get, get things done with their players. Okay, let's finish off with uh, some emerging tech. We've got a few questions on that, you know, hot topic. Um, so, <sighs> I guess as much as you can, there's a lot of questions and there's a couple questions in Q and A that are talking about markerless motion capture um, and other emerging technologies. Um, can you talk a, a little bit about, and I know you may have to speak in more generic terms than I'd like, but what emerging technologies are most exciting to you right now? Um, ben? Sure. Uh, yeah, obviously markerless is, it's the holy grail, right? I mean, we all want to get there in a way that is useful. The problem is if you're using a technology, you know, IMU based or marker based or markerless, like if, if your time sinks off or if you have a bad fit of the model, like you could be giving the complete opposite feedback of what the data really is. And, I, and that's the sensitivity, sensitivity of a lot of things out there. So uh, I've become a very skeptical biomechanist um, and try to, not make broad claims. Uh, probably the most exciting area for me is around workload management. Um, different sensors coming out, uh, existing ones, and just being able to apply those. I think there's a lot more signal in those devices for workload um, than there are mechanics, and I think that's a good bang for your buck. Yeah, I think in, in terms of, for me, like all the tech that's coming out is, is really exciting. So stepping in, just for background, I started in February. Um, with the Orioles. So we're, we're trying to grow this and we're trying to figure out what we're doing um, in terms of, of growing even more. So all of this tech is, is really exciting and it's just figuring out what fits best for our organization and what we can use to help our players. So that's, that's one thing I'm really excited about ABBS in general is looking at these technologies and, and giving, giving information on those to a biomechanical standpoint, giving us more in-depth of what's happening with those with those pieces of technology so that we can apply those in our organization. Bryce, I'm not letting you off the hook. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that application piece that, that Ethan finished up with is huge, right? And, you know, like um, Dr. Alderson said, you know, we, we look at wearables, we look at different pieces of technology, and we need to critically evaluate it, its validation and reliability and and full knowing that, you know, Every piece of tech, um, even even within our own, you know, research labs and, and whatnot, will have certain limitations. Whether it's an approach, whether it's it's how we look at things, um, and it's understanding those limitations. I feel and and understanding what question your organization, your group, really wants to go after. That may that may start to you know bend the and tip the scale towards which, which piece of equipment you go after. Um, you know, uh, given all other things equal, and so um, really, I think what excites me most about the space is just that the fact that there's more accessible technology which is 
which also can be painful at times if if you know we're trying to vet a space and there's uh, multiple you know players in that space but at the same time there's opportunity and i think you know it's our due diligence to ensure that we're upholding a high standard to that um but the fact that we can go and access uh, technology that may help us track changes you know define changes um i, I think gives us opportunity I think I think it would be interesting if someone could go in with an eagle eye to all of the MLB organizations because you'll see a lot of them using the same piece of technology but using it in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So what happens is as an organization we'll get a piece of technology and figure out how it works best within our system and that's what you'd see all throughout the league is the same different teams will be using the same technology in completely different aspects. Yeah. Um, I think we're, we're yeah, you know, we're well past the time the conference was originally scheduled then. So I'm going to just wrap up, give you guys each a chance to say one final thing that maybe we haven't discussed or even just advice to aspiring uh, biomechanists that want to work in MLB or anything at all. Let's start with Ben. Um, I, th I, think, uh, I think I would leave it with just like a skill set that I'm probably just looking for. So even like recruiting wise, like uh, a lot of biomechanists reach out. Um, and the first thing I always look for now is programming experience, um, whether that's MATLAB, uh, Python, or other uh, technologies or other stacks. Um, that's like, lo and behold, it has to be it. Um, without that, it's so difficult to scale ideas. So, I mean, I just would say if you're expiring, please learn to code. Thanks. Yeah, I, I actually, it's, it's funny, Ben, because I come from the I come from the background of no coding. So that was one issue I had when I was, I was looking into this. So it's been a lot of a, like learning for me. So that's a, that's a big piece of what's happening in baseball today. Um, but for me, it's, it's reach out. Don't be afraid to send emails, find them on Twitter, follow them, send them messages. Like you, you can't be too annoying when you're trying to find a job. So reach out and try to figure out who you can work for. And if, if that's where you want to be, you'll be able to find, find your, find your place. And and as, as long as it's interesting to you, keep pushing for it. Like we don't, there, there's, there's not a lot of positions in baseball, but there's a lot of people that are really aspiring to be there. So don't give up. Always push to find that job's going to work best for you. And just always continue learning. That's a big piece. Don't get complacent with what you know. Biomechanics is always changing. Our organizational philosophy usually stays the same, but we're continuously learning as a group. So keep learning everything. New papers come out, new ideas come out. Look at them, figure them out and then just see what's best going forward. Yeah, I mean, Ben and Ethan really said, you know, a lot of the core things there. I think the thing I'll add, and this is this might be just a, a, a bias of my own, but, you know, really diversity of experience. Um, you know, I, I can't, I, I, I consistently pull, you know, from insights, whether it's, you know, stuff we did from footwear, stuff we did from, you know, building classification schemes, working with amputees, you know, um, different areas that that challenge you to think in different ways, allow you to bring um, different insights. And I, and I think that's one of the things that I particularly look for, um, and I know biomechanics conference, but in a sports scientist in general is, is just being able to critically assess the situation and understand what is our goal and then piecing those things together to say, hey, what information do we have to enact performance and act change? And so, um, you know, try and get some, you know, breadth of knowledge, um, volunteer somewhere, you know, do different things, um, expand your horizons, because you never know what you're going to pull from uh, down the road. Uh, Bryson, I'll hand off to you now. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. You know, this concludes our day two, um, of the ABBS conference. And so, you know, just a couple things here. Um, just a reminder again, thank you to our sponsors, um, for, for helping us put on this event, um, at the bottom there, you know, our Twitter and Instagram at biomech underscore baseball. Again, you know, um, go there, look at the tweet that's pinned to the top of, um, um, comment there for, uh, things you want the ABBS board to discuss, um, tomorrow in, in our concluding session. Um, and then the second thing, uh, just to wrap up here is that, you know, again, these videos will be, are recorded and will be uploaded um, after the conference and we'll send out those, that information uh, after the conference. And so spread the word that this is recorded to all your friends and colleagues. Um, but thanks again for joining us for, for day two.
uh, of this conference. Thanks.